think there may be some background that we should talk about here that may or may not be things you have looked at before. Before we talk about the limit of the sum of two functions, this is the limit of the sum of two functions. Okay. What we should look at before is, you probably have never talked about, just in general, what happens when you add two functions together, what happens when you subtract two functions. So let's look quickly in your calculator at what, what happens with that. If I, would, if I may put in two functions here, one being x squared and one being x cubed, if you don't like the looks that those are different, if you're willing to push a couple more buttons, you can do it this way. Math. You can go down to the cubed and then make it look all nice. Okay, and make yourself happy. Or if you're really lazy, what you could do is you could just say, I want x squared, I'm going to go x, x. And then for x cubed, you could go x, x, x. Okay? It'll interpret that as x times x times x. Okay? You can do whatever you like. I don't care. But uh, whatever you're doing, we're going to put these. I'm going to go back to this so that we're, uh, so that it looks more obvious what we're doing. What you've probably never looked at in general is what does, uh, if I put in the function x squared plus x cubed, Okay, if I put in the function x squared plus x cubed, as in I'm the sum of those other two functions, or if I do it this way, maybe it'll look more obvious here. Uh, variables, y variables, function y1 plus this, 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 y2. Okay, if I put in y1 plus y2, you've probably never thought about it, but it's going to be obvious, I think, what's true. If I pick a random point, let's say let's say two, x is two. What is this function y one equal to? It's equal to four, right? What is this function equal to? Eight. <laughs> this one's two. This one's eight. So what's this function going to be? What do we say? Four and eight. So this is twelve. I don't necessarily know exactly what this graph is going to look like. But I, could, I can tell you at any given point you tell me, I can come up with the point for this based on those two. So what I'm saying is if we uh, turn that one off for a second and we put in zoom, I'm going to put in zoom uh, 6 for that's x squared, that's x cubed. Actually, let's change this to spread it out a bit more. We don't need the negative side. Let's go there up to 4.7 and let's go here from negative two up to, I don't know, 16 or something like that. So there's the graph. There's x squared, there's x cubed, and it hasn't graphed the other one. If I put the value at two, it's going to tell me the values that you just showed me, right? For, for y1, the value is four. For y2, the value is eight. <coughs> I don't know what the other graph's going to look like, but I know for sure that the other point is going to be here at 12. For any one you give me, I know that if I just add these two y values, I get the other y value. Does that make sense? It, it makes sense, but you've prob there's nothing in Math 12 or 11 where you've ever looked at that in general. But it's true, right? If you add two functions, the values are just the sum of the values. The difference, it would be the same thing. If we subtracted them, we'd get the difference of them. Right, so if we go back here and turn this function on, and we say, uh, and then you look at the graph of the thing, there's the third one, right? So if we do calculate the value at 2, that one's 4, that one's 8, that one's 12. It works for any other value here you want. Try, uh, try 1.5 maybe, that one's 2.25, that one's 3.375, so that one is those two added together. The reason I show you that is because that's the background you need for making sense of this. If you have two functions, th this is basically saying the same thing as we just said. If you have a, uh, a two functions here, one of which, maybe we'll uh, make a bit more space here first. You can read that still, can't you? Um, if we have a, 
if we have a function here, two functions here, one of which is going to be called f of x, and one of which is going to be called g of x. Mathematicians are boring. They use the same letters for everything. If you pick a point here somewhere, A, this is A, okay? Uh, if there's a point on this curve and a point on this curve, if this one, if the limit is L, and this one, the limit is M, this is saying if you want the limit of the sum of those two functions, f of x plus g of x, which would look like something weird up here somewhere, right? It would be up there somewhere. Okay, this thing up here somewhere. There's the sum of those functions. All it's saying is whatever the limit is you approach from either side, even if it's undefined or whatever, what do we know that limit's going to be? The sum of those two numbers, L plus M, whatever it is. Even if there's a hole in the graph here, but you know the limit is M, this is still going to be whatever L plus M is. That's all that this is saying. It looks more complicated than it is. This is saying the limit of a sum is the sum of the limits. Sounds pretty earth shattering, right? The limit of a sum, of the sum of two functions, or more than two, is the sum there's adding, of the limits, of the two individual limits, those two things. Okay? So that's what that's saying there. The limit of a sum is the sum of the individual limits. What that means is, if we can scroll down to the first question in the next section here. What that means is, if I ask you what the limit of this function is, this function is made up of adding a bunch of things together. If you want to, you can analyze this by looking at the limit of each individual piece, right? Each individual part of that. In practice, you're not going to write all this out, but for this, it makes sense to, to do this and say, that's the same as whatever the limit is of x cubed plus whatever the limit is of 4x squared minus whatever the limit is of Three. Okay. If you knew what the individual limits are, you can add them all together. In in practice, you might not know what the graph of this is going to look like, but we do know actually that. He, does this have any holes in the graph or any unusual things that we have to watch out for? X cubed, it doesn't, right? So you can come up with the limit just by subbing in the number for that one. This is going to be 2 cubed. Does this one, 4x squared, does that have any weird, unusual things? No, right? You can just come up with the limit for that by subbing in the number. 4 times 2 squared. 3, does that have any unusual things? What would the graph of that look like? Horizontal line at 3, right? So this is a 3. You can come up with the limit of that by looking at the limit of each individual function. In practice, you'll probably know, does this altogether have any weird, unusual features? Any polynomial is just going to be some nice continuous thing of one shape or the other. So eventually all you're going to do for that is just sub in the number originally. But the concept here is if you have a function, you can come up with its limits based on each individual one. All right? So that ends up being 8 plus 16 minus 3, 21. This one you can come up with by, it, this is the quotient of two functions. There's one function, there's another function. You can come up with the limit by looking at the limit of the quotient. So you can say that this is equal to whatever the limit of that top function is, x fourth plus x squared minus 1. You could split it up even more, divided by the limit of, X, uh, limit as x approaches one of that bottom function. <coughs> this is not true of everything, every mathematical thing you've done, right? Is that true of square roots? If somebody says the square root of uh, 
something? Well, let's see. Is it is this true of the square root? Like square root of four ninths. Is that equal to square root of four over square root of nine? It is. Uh, if you do square root of four plus nine, is that equal to square root of four plus square root of nine? No, no right? So it, it doesn't go without saying that all of these are true. Like it sounds obvious when we look at it here. All of these are going to be true. The limit of a sum is the sum of the limits. The limit of a difference is the difference of the limits. The limit of a product is the product of the limits. That's not true for square roots, right? The square root of a quotient is the quotient of the square roots. The square root of a sum is not equal to the sum of the square roots, right? It's it, That's all that this is saying is it's showing or saying to you, if you have any one of those mathematical operations involved, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, constant multiple, powers, okay? The limit of a power is the power of the limits. All of those things are true if you need to, okay? Can you do the following? This limit you're going to have to use some algebra on because you can't just directly sub the number in. You're going to have to do a few steps there that say this is equal to the limit of because you're not going to be able to divide the individual limits. You're going to have to do some algebra. This one I would like you to think about why you can't do it by subbing it in. You're, you're, what you have to resort to is algebra. This one you can use algebra. This one you can't use algebra. So your next step is, well, let's look at it graphically. And then you're going to have to consider that statement. And then I would like you to start thinking about this. We will talk about this in about five or ten minutes. I'm going to tell you right now what this what this notation means. This, have you ever seen, well, actually, take notice of what that says. X approaches one with a plus sign after it. Have you ever seen that, where you write the plus sign or minus sign after something? This means, yeah, this means up, X is approaching 1 from the positive side. Approaches 1 from the positive side. What that means is as you approach 1 from this side, how does the function behave? This one means from the negative side. So as you approach from that side, how does the function behave? Think about how the function is behaving and try and come up with some numbers here. The, this, uh, this means the two-sided limit. How does it behave as you approach from either side? Is it the same? It's got to be the same to say that this limit exists. This one does not exist. You can think about why that is. Okay, I'm going to stop this. You you think about these things. Task one is to try and use algebra to figure that out. Task two is to try and use a graph to figure this out. Task three is to figure some of these and the following on the next page. And then we'll talk about them together in a few minutes.